to Shelf Help, a channel dedicated to talking to the void about whatever book I happen to be reading. I am your host, the reader. The following review will contain spoilers. Like the rest of the series, this book opens shortly after the last ended. Our heroes, Poppy, Castile, Chiron, Delano, and the Draken, Nectes, are under Wayfair Castle searching for Iris, Poppy's biological father who Isabeth has kept prisoner so she can write <coughs> so uh, uh sec <coughs> uh, forced to father children with her against his will <coughs> someday I'd like to be monetized anyway they find him and free him before Poppy suddenly falls asleep Nectus assures a very freaked out Castile and Chiron that she's gone into stasis to complete her culling into the primal of blood and bone. She's just taking an extended nap. But it might help if they talk to her. And so begins the recounting of the first book from Castile's point of view. Now Castile was the villain of the first book. Yes, he became the romantic lead. But in the first book, he orchestrates Poppy's kidnapping, actively kills two of her guards, is responsible for the death of a third, kills more guards sent to travel with her, lies to her from word one to gain her trust, and ultimately forces her to marry him under false pretenses. And that doesn't account for all the people he hurt along the way or killed for being an inconvenience. This actually isn't that uncommon in supernatural romance. But, well, we are dealing with literal monsters. So this version does soften his image a bit. I feel the need, at this point, to give the same warning as the book. Castile is not in a good place at the start of this series. He's better than he was when he was freed from the Ascended, but he's still not good. If you need to skip this part, please jump to this time. A hundred and fifty years ago, Castile went on a one-man mission to end the threat of the Blood Crown and got himself captured. He spent the next fifty years a prisoner, his blood taken to ascend new vampy, kept in a cage and chains, sexually, physically, and emotionally abused, forced to kill other Atlanteans to survive, and the body is left to rot alongside him. And these are just the things that have been mentioned so far in the story. His brother Malik managed to free him, but was captured in his place. That was a hundred years ago. Malik has been held for twice as long as Castile. At first, Castile does not deal with his PTSD and guilt. He just drowns them in alcohol, opium, self-harm, and sex that is more about control than pleasure. Chiron is the one who finally gets him out of his spiral by getting him to talk. And talking about what happened to him is really what got him on the road to recovery. When the series opens, he's better, but not really good. He still drinks heavily, has terrible insomnia, and still has thoughts of self-harm, and has casual sex with partners he can't remember. But he's functional, more or less, most of the time. More than anything, he's angry, mostly at himself. But the Ascended in general, and the Blood Crown in particular, are a close second. And he is drowning in guilt about his brother. For those of you who are rejoining us, when Poppy said she did not know how he was functional while in so much emotional pain, she wasn't kidding. And Poppy isn't a magical cure for Castile's mental health. Throughout the series, he and Poppy still casually mention aspects of his issues. He even asks her not to take his pain deliberately, and she respects that request. On to the story. As a motif, I'm not super into his POV stories. They rarely add much, and at times they can do more harm than good. The series thus far has been told in third person limited, following Poppy. 
in War of Two Queens, we did have some of Castile's perspective. But for the most part, what's going on in Castile's head is a mystery. Which is a fine thing for a romantic lead. You want them to be that way. It allows the readers to project their own ideas. For me, Castile at the beginning of the series was cold and calculating. Desperate to free his brother and save his people. He has carefully planned and plotted to kidnap the maiden. The one flaw, he never expected to fall in love. In reality, this scheme is way more harebrained and half-baked. Half his own people think he's nuts, but they're loyal and willing to go with, along with it anyway. He still never expected to fall in love, though. It shifted my perspective of the series as a whole. Not terribly, mind you. It still works. I just like my villains cold and calculating. In place of carefully laid plans and years of careful plotting, he knows nothing about Poppy beyond some publicly known facts. Even with his people planted in the guards, so much of what goes on is a surprise to him. He's not even that active even as he falls for her. The fact that the Duke is caning her has to be spelled out for him instead of doing his own legwork, which I did find rather disappointing. At the opening of the story, he does not view Poppy as a full human being. Or worse, she's fully complicit in the schemes of the Blood Crown. He is using this to justify his actions. With context, he's gone from wanting to have his cake and eat it too, to knowing he's an ass, while still wanting that cake. Even more so as he realizes Poppy is just another victim of the Ascended. More so than most, in fact. Though he does not let that stop him, even as he develops feelings for her. He starts looking for a way out for her. Even wondering if he can kidnap her again from the capital after freeing his brother. Which leads to the forced marriage. He's got logical reasons, instead of, I want you and I'm going to keep you, even if I have to be a better person to s so you stay. But he also doesn't share those reasons with her at the time, because it would ruin the whole being the villain to book one thing. The weakness of this story is that it is just the first book, retold. I have the first book. And on the whole, little was really added by the retelling. Now don't get me wrong, there's definitely stuff that happened, off screen, that I really wanted to see. Castile's fun meeting with the Duke was top of that list, and it did not disappoint. His dealings with Jericho? A bit less than I was hoping for, however. There are three things that stand out as important. 1. Castile and Chiron have been sharing partners since way before Poppy, which makes my little Polly heart happy. But more than that, Castile and Poppy's relationship has been a whirlwind. Poppy's relationship with Chiron is much more of a slow burn, and a lot less physical, which really makes me wish Chiron had gotten to tell some stories. Two, what happened in the last chapter is fucking awesome. I will not spoil it. Best moment of the book, no notes. Three, Delano swore to protect Poppy with his life because she saved him when Jericho tried to kill her. Not that anyone ever told her about it. Which explains why he keeps showing up to protect Poppy in little ways without Castile finding his behavior weird. But I suspect that it won't turn out to be that simple. All three of these get at something I really like about this series. And series in general. Continuity! The joining is mentioned in Book 2 and comes up several times before it actually happens. Poppy has a power she really wants that is confirmed in that awesome last chapter. There are a few hint drops about the prophecy long before it's actually spoken. Miss Willa is definitely more important than the running gag of the diary. And if something more important isn't going on with Delano, the only solid white wolven in the whole series, just like the one Serafina saved in the prequel, who swore an oath to a future primal, who has followed her everywhere, 
so he is present for most important events, is the first to call her queen, the first to speak telepathically with her, and is the only person allowed near Poppy while she's in primal stasis besides Castile and Chiron, I will eat my fucking keyboard. I'm going to put this on my second shelf. Awesome ending aside, it's just too much of a retread of the first book. I really would have liked to see more from the whole series, especially parts Poppy wasn't present for, or when Castile would have had a different perspective. A short list would be some time with Alistair, with his parents, some of the time in Spence's end, the coronation, realizing Poppy was a goddess, and events that followed. Stories from Chiron would have been good, too, especially during that time while Castile was a hostage of the Blood Crown. Castile is absolutely a hot mess at the beginning of this book, with good reason. It would have been nice to see his character development and acceptance of his feelings, those for Poppy and about his brother. But as I said, continuity is this series' strong suit. So let's see where this is going. Thank you for your time. I know everyone's mileage will vary. Feel free to leave your thoughts.